Hello everyone, uh, today we are gonna review a tournament match, this is the 43rd tournament, um, and, uh, so it's a new one, I unfortunately lost in the finals of the last one, but uh, you know, a fresh start, new meta, so very interesting stuff, um, let's get right into this, right here you can see that my opponent's running stall, and I kind of expected this, so I brought this team which um, is meant to break stall, so if I lose, I'm like the worst player in the world. Um, so I have Mawa and Tokus, and the Tokus is uh, Stallbreaker Tokus, right? And um, Stallbreaker Tokus is, well, really good. Uh, other than the fact that I can't really beat the, um, the Underwear Clef, unless I get like super lucky, but you know, you all know that's not gonna happen. Um, and uh, Mawa is also really good because Mawa kind of to a KOs everything on his team. Um I don't know, even Kaldio's decent if you look at it. Uh if I go for Secret Sword chance you can drop and Hydro Pump kind of to a KOs all, all his team if I somehow get racks up against the Sableye. Uh I just hate playing against stall because well it's um it's annoying. But anyways, let's go right into this. He's gonna lead Sableye as I lead my Kaldio. Um, I choose to not leave Mawa there because I don't want to get burned turn 1, I just went for a Scald. As that does 46%, revealing reveal that he's supposed to death. He just goes for a hard recover here, I just go for another Scald, seeing if he wants to stay in. But he chooses to switch out into Chansey and doesn't get the burn. Right here I go into Tangrowth. Tangrowth is always my switching on Chansey because I don't want my Mawa getting chipped down with Seismic Tosses. Or even Togekiss getting chipped down with Seismic Tosses is kind of bad. So Tang what Tangro does against Chansey is that it threatens a knockoff, um, which is what I go for. Uh, I go, I just went for Sludge Bomb because I know Sable I can't really exert any offensive pressure to me. And worst case, if he does Willow with me, I do have to heal belt with Tokus. I don't really mind getting knocked off because I don't need my Assault Vest for anything on his team. As I just go for another Sludge Bomb, trying to fish for the, um, the poison, but I unfortunately don't get it. But this is fine. As he goes for Kama, I'm like, oh fuck, it's uh, it's this this set. Um, so he doesn't have Wisp, which is some, which is good because I don't ever need to worry about Mawa getting Wisp. Um, I just go into Rotom as he fires off another Shadow Ball. Does a solid 38%. And just go for a Divac, Divacing these rocks away. Um, as he is the only side with the rock, so that's that. Uh, I just go Volt Switch right out into my Toad Kiss. Because I know to kiss isn't gonna take too much from it, and I just went for a nasty plant, uh, ready to just flinch him down. And like even then, Shadow Ball's not gonna do a lot to my token kiss, so I don't really mind this. <laughs> and uh, right here, I just went for a roost, healing me back up to a hundred. As he goes for another Shadow Ball, uh, puts me at around sixty. I went for another plot because um, why not? As he goes for another, um, because I could always like roost this off. And he goes for another um, calm mine, and I'm like, oh fuck, I need to start flinching this. So I just flinch it down twice, and then this time Wolf, it will be picked up. I'm not sure why he didn't. Later, it was seen that he was unwear clef. I'm not sure why he didn't just go hard unwear clef because I feel like that was just a unnecessary play because now rocks can go up, and uh, even unwear clef doesn't appreciate the rocks um, damage. Anyways, I just try and flinch him once because I, I know that while well, I have a higher percent chance of flinching than not, that's the first thing. The second thing is that um, I just want to see if he's bluffing the um, underwear, which he isn't. So I'm forced to switch out here uh, as I go into my Mawa because I know he's either going to like protect or go for yep, go for something like that, trying to heal himself up. As he goes into hard into Zapdos, I just went for a PR here. Uh, probably scouting if I have Iron Head or not, um, which will heal him back up to relatively healthy. Uh, I go into my Garchomp as he doubles right back into Clef. I put my Rocks up as he goes for a Calm Mind, I believe. Yep. Which is which at this point I I I know that the Clef is is a huge threat to my team because um well every time he goes Clef I need to go Mawa and every time if he Moon Blast on my Mawa so she Mawa is eventually gonna get chipped down and. Um, it's not going to look great from there, so um, I really need to be careful against the cleft, not to risk my Mawa too much against it, or else I'm going to get reversed by, by it. So I just went for a hard PR here as he goes into the Gliscor, uh, not wanting to risk the Zapdos because it dies. 
Um, I, I really want double PR here, but I was like, uh, I really can't risk uh, Mawa dropping there because if he does, unfortunately, Earthquake and Mawa does drop, then, um, then, then it's not great. So I just go for a, uh, I think I just go for a Scald. Or, no, I went for a Hydro Pump because it does 2 high KO slow, bro. Presumably if I get the roll, but unfortunately uh, the next one does 44% and he lives on 1%, but he's for some reason go, goes for a Toxic rather than um, recovering up, which is fine. So he lives on 1%, comes back in at like 20 something percent, whatever. Uh, he just goes for a soft oil. I knew he was going to go for a soft oil there, so I go hard impact. Tango threatening another knockoff here. As he goes to the quick score, I'm like, this is completely fine because I do have HP Ice and I know that from the Mawa damage, taking only 54, he's probably like max fit stuff or something like that. Impish max fit stuff. So I just went for a HP Ice as he goes for the defog. Um, and I just Giga Drain here because I don't want him to roost up if he chooses to do that. Uh, but he's smart and goes right into his Zapdos. And right here, I think I just knock off his item because knocking off here is really good because I know he was Rocky Helmet. And uh, this allows my, my Mawa to spam play rough without worried about getting chipped. So, um, I just go for a Sludge Bomb, hoping for a Poison, and I was like, ah, shit, like, that's like four Sludge Bomb and zero Poisons at this point. So, that's not fantastic, but I do get my Rocks up here, which is really nice. Um, as he goes into Hard into Gliscor, oh, I, yeah, Hard Switch into Keldeo, expecting the Gliscor to come in. Yeah, that, that play made sense. Because it was so obvious that either the Gliscor or the Clef was coming in. And even if Clef, Clef comes in, I threaten another Hydro Pump here. And uh, he has to play play the 50-50 of whether or not I'm going to Secret Sword or just Hydro Pump. And if I do Secret Sword, then his, if he ch his Chansey drops, then it's, it's, it's over at that point. Because Hydro Pump will just pick up his whole team. Um, even, like, Hydro Pump does a shit ton to Clef, like, at least, like, 80%. So, this was a great play on my part. Um... I just go for a Hydro Pump, a Scald here actually, because Scald does pick up the Clef score, 2 kills a Clef, and it uh, kills the Slowbro because he is so low at this point. Uh, Zapdos does not want to switch in, unless he's like Khan, Max, Death, which I don't think he is. Um, so going to Chansey is the right play for him. Um, yeah, I mean he has, unless he has no better play. And uh, I just go right back into my Tango because I don't want Mawal getting the Seismic Tossed, right? I don't mind Tangro getting Seismic Toss, if anything, and I threaten another another knockoff here, um, or, or a Sludge Bomb, because I read that he was going to go to Zapdos. I go for another Sludge Bomb, and that's like six Sludge Bombs at this point, and um, I just switch to Garchomp as he goes for the Roost. I would just went for Star Fox immediately as he goes to Glitzcore, and I just Dragon Tail him out right here, revealing that I do have the Dragon Tail, and yeah. He goes, he's far, forced to hard switch into Chansey. I put that rocks as he goes for his. Uh, I go hard into Keldeo because I threaten a Secret Sword onto the Chansey. Uh, I went for Focus Bats here because I know it 2 KOs Chansey if he decides to go for some goofy shit. And uh, it also KOs uh, Gliscor. Uh, it does like a billion percent to Clef. And uh, his Slowbro cannot really switch into this either. So I was, I was just kind of scouting what he's going to do. I mean... Stop oiling was always the right play for him because Secret Sword won't Oko. So, so yeah, so good play by him. Um, but I just feel like the Focus Blast, uh, if he decides to go for some misplays, then it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. So, <coughs> I'm sorry. A nasty plot as he goes um goes Clef. Uh, a nasty plot as while well, he switched out to no Chansey. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, okay, so we double, we both double switch. Wait, no, no, we didn't. I double switch as he goes for soft oil because he was expecting me to, I guess, spam focus pass and hope I beat him one to one. But I decided not to because, well, it's barely doing half and that, that's the problem. But I just go into Togekiss, um, I plot because I, I wasn't expecting to switch actually. I was expecting him to go to Zapdos to scout what I'm gonna do, but he just goes hard Clefable. Fable. As I just just flinch, try and flinch him, and right here I, I I decide that he's for sure going to go for the protect just to gain some level of recovery back. So I double into my Mawao here. Um, I probably should have SD right here because if I SD, I guarantee pick up a kill. Um, as you can see, he goes he sacks Slowbro here, and uh, I take two I take two times Rocky Helmet damage. I mean, if I was so sure that he was going to switch 
out. I probably should no. If you were just staying in and protect, I probably should have just SD because the guarantee picks up something in one, one play rough, right? And that's good because well, I don't take the double, double um, helmet damage. And right now this puts me, like, in the very bad spot because I I can only come in twice, or once. Wait, yeah, once, because after that I would die to Starbucks unless he defox. So. I go back into Tokus as he goes for the roost. Uh, Tokus is always a fine switch in into um, into his Gliscord because well, it's it's whatever. As he reveals, he has the Rock Tomb, but it doesn't do crap. I don't know why you would run Rock Tomb on Gliscord, but that's a very interesting tech. I just go for a roost here as he goes to the Zapdos. Um, it's a very interesting stuff on his part. Go hard into Garchomp as he goes into Zapdos. I went for I just went for a hard EQ because I, I actually wasn't expecting this. This was not at all intentional. I was expecting him to go clef, and I don't like I don't mind him going Gliscor because because his Gliscor is at full health anyways, and I can just always drag and tail him out, right? And uh, I expect him to go clef mainly because, um, well, he, I, he knows I'm Tank Chomp, which he was, so I don't want to give him um free like <clears throat> a free switch into clef. And uh, Earthquake does like a solid 30% to it, so I, I'll force him to wish if he goes, if he chooses to go for it. And then uh, I can switch into something like Tangrowth, Knock Off his item, or Sludge Bomb, try and poison him. So that was kind of my thought process there. I wasn't really trying to catch the Zapdos because, I don't know, maybe... Yeah, so he's definitely like somewhat speed invested, but I'm not. I just spam Earthquake here based on the same logic, and it kind of worked out because we, I'm able to keep his um, Zapdos pretty low. As he goes for the Defog, um and uh i just spam keep spamming earthquake because i just don't want the club to come in and zapdos just drops right there so i don't know man i feel like if he goes to the gliscord i would have been a much better play for him because well gliscord like gliscord was garchomp without risking um health and clef so whatever i go into my tingra to threaten a knockoff onto the clef clefable and a, um, not only a Naka, but also a potential Sludge Bomb Poison. And uh, I feel like this is nice, because now Clef loses his recovery. If I can somehow get Rocks back up again, well, he's going to take Chep every time he comes in without any, um, any, any, like, like he's going to take Chep without any um, recovery back, right? And he can't really, and Protect won't really help him, right? I can just be spamming, I don't know, my wall player off and not worry about it, not getting to a KO because, well, he doesn't have um, the leftovers anymore. So, yeah, because leftovers means that, well, he, Protect gets him 6.25 back every turn and then, and then the next turn, which, like, if he wish stalls, gets another 6.25 back and then Protects again. So that's, that's just annoying. So, knocking this off is great. I just stay in and try to bomb and poison him. And fortunately, I finally got the first poison after what, like seven sludge bombs, which is really nice. I switch out into Togekiss. My 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 thought process here was, well, <laughs> nothing really appreciates coming into this. Um, and I could go Togekiss and try and flinch it down, right? Because I have the uh, the air slash itself plus the poison, which is doing a substantial amount of twelve point five percent every time. Um, and I can I might be able to flinch him down. And even if he takes me out, I get a free switch into my Mawile and turn the KO. Especially when Rox isn't up here, so that's kind of what I was thinking here. Um, he, I just went for Air Slash as he doesn't get flinch and goes hard for Moonblast right here. Uh, which gets him back up to full. And I went for another Air Slash and unfortunately he misses. Which is fine. Um, this should still be winning for me because I do go back into Mawile. Um, I turn a... Okay, basically... Okay, so basically this play was um, interesting because pretty much, I think he lives one, right? The Clef lives one at 76%, but if he chooses to KO me, then um, he's going to die to poison. And uh, if he chooses to wish, well, it's just a free play rough for me and he gets nothing from it and takes poison damage and eventually dies. So, um, so I think switching to Nucleus Corp was the right play for him. If he trades um, Clef for... Clef for Mawile, then I think Tangrowth can kind of beat him because I just go Tangrowth, threatening knockoff, and then 
I don't know. I just throw rocks up. And Caldeo should be able to win this one at the very end. So this is what it is. Um, and uh, I switch out here. I'm not sure why he didn't go for a roost, but switching to Gliscor was always the fine play, especially knowing now that he doesn't have Toxic. I just went for a knockoff here as he goes for the rocks, which once again limits my Mawa. Uh, he goes for a heal bell, revealing that he has heal bell, um, which is unfortunate because. Well, it's fortunate and unfortunate because um, Clefable is not is now not poisoned, but like he still doesn't have the leftovers, which is good. Um, and uh, Gliscor, with his Toxic Orb knocked off, is now healed, which means he's not getting any recovery back now. So, so it's uh, kind of awkward for him. Um, I go into Hard into Garchomp to put my rocks back up as he goes for Sides because and basically kills himself. So, uh, that was he, he's now at twenty four percent. I probably should have just Earthquake and that picks him up because his Evil Eye's gone, but whatever. I just Dragon Tail him right out here as I get a crit. Um, and he goes into Gliscor, goes for a Roost, I Dragon Tail him again, I think. Yep. And uh, he goes back in Chansey, I just EQ and knock this out. He can never go Clef here because EQ will probably do a KO him, especially after the Rax. And uh, right here, I hard switch into Tangra, just trying to bomb. And poison him again as he goes starts CMing up. And I'm like, this is completely fine because every time I go into Mawile now, I probably I just guarantee pick up a kill. And even then, because now he loses Chansey, um, Scald will pick up a kill if I ever force a switch out from Clef, if that makes sense. And uh, right here, I just I was like, yeah, I'm tired of this. Giga is not doing crap, so I have to go to Garchomp here because I threaten. I wish like like it's it's not gonna help him because. Look, Kamash is, is doing like 32% plus the poison rate. That puts it, that's like 40% each, 40 something percent each turn. He's pretty much forced to wish, and the moment he stops wishing, his clef is just going to drop. So, um, so that's that. Let's skip through a few turns. Okay, well, pretty much. He finally decides to pick my um, Garchomp up, and uh, I. I just go into Mawa, I PR here as I miss, but at this point, it doesn't really matter because if he kills me, um, Caldeo comes in, hide, uh, just Scald is enough to pick the last two up. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, this one was closer, honestly, than I wanted it to be because I got two Stall Breakers. Well, Mawa is not really a Stall Breaker, it's more like a Wall Breaker, but I got one huge Wall Breaker and um, one Stall Breaker, but this came down pretty close, honestly. Uh, closer than I really wanted it to be, so. Anyways, he played really well in my opinion, um, but yeah, this one was pure matchup because, well, Tokyo's and Mawa kind of just destroy it all, so you can't, like, th this one was just honestly just pure matchup. Anyways, on to game two, as I bring in Litter Mawa team, <laughs> I'm probably going to bring, like, all Mawa's, all Mawa teams, um, this, uh, this tournament, but we got Weavile, Ban Weavile, um, Rocks Lando, Manuel, Specs Laddy, which you'll see, Magnezone, and, uh, and uh, what's this, Azu, yeah. I just lead Azu here because Azu has a good matchup against his whole team. If he leads Hippal, then he needs to be afraid of the liquidation, and he is forced to pull switching out into Zapdos. Uh, if he leads Kirin, I threaten they play rough because Kirin doesn't have freeze dry in this gen. And even if he leads Aegisouch, I threaten they knock off. So, uh, this is all pretty nice. I just knock off here's turn one because, okay, I, I, Okay, wait. Okay, I knew he was Mega, right? Here is what I was thinking. I knew he was Mega. Uh, Mash doesn't kill me. Mash doesn't kill me, and I take a solid sixty percent. So if Mash doesn't kill me, I t if I take if I can take a solid sixty percent off from this thing, um, and then like it's more like sixty to seventy, but if I can take like seventy sixty five percent off this thing, I switch to Land Roots, and then it's pretty much dead, right? Because he takes another um, Rocky Helmet chip. I, also, I don't really want him trying to predict the landers and go for a ice punch. That would be really, really bad. Uh, also, if I can somehow kill this Metagross, my Lani kind of just wins uh, because I don't need to be worried about uh, being pursued trapped, which is um, a valid concern. So that's that. I go for a straight for a knockoff as I took a solid for two percent off the Zapdos. He's forced to roost as I go into my lobby. I fire off a HP fire because I knew that okay Zapdos does just drop to a specs um Draco Meteor if he's like defense invested rather than Spadef. 
So I knew he was gonna go AG slash. No way he miss he um risks the um Metagross because well um uh, even like Specs Draco is gonna do it like at least half to Metagross. So uh I knew he was gonna go AG slash and AG slash took take that pretty well. That that was Specs HP fire and that only took about 25%, but it's fine. As he goes for a shadow ball, um and I just put my rocks up. Because I knew he wasn't going to stay in. I'm invested just to outspeed Jolly Titar. So it also outspeeds naively AG Slash. Or Jolly Age. No, this is probably Timid. I don't even know. But it's probably some plus speed nature. But Because he just goes hard for a Shadow Ball. So. Uh, I'm just going to put my rocks up. Knowing that he won't stay in. As he goes to the Kurum. And I was like. Ah, oh, shit. I went into Azu here. Not Magnet Zone. Because I do. I can see him going for an EP. And Ice Beam and Azu kind of covers both Ice Beam and EP. Uh, and as he does go for EP, and uh, I have to go into my Latias, he goes for another run, um, which I definitely disagree with because I don't know, it was kind of obvious I was going to go either Landorus or Latias, so he should probably double into Metagross or Age Slash. But I was, yeah. I just go for another HP fire, knowing that he won't stay in, and I don't think he'll be risking the Clef. I never want to Psychic because if he. Predicts it right and goes Metagross, my Lali is gone pretty much. So I don't mind just spamming Specs HP Fire because even if he goes Clef, uh, as you'll see later, it takes a solid 27% off the Clef. And he can't really go Zapdos here um, or anything like that. So HP Fire is always all around the best play. I just keep spamming HP Fire because I don't want to be trapped by Metagross whatsoever. Um, go for another HP Fire as Age of does just. No, as he switches into Clef, my bad. I thought Aegis I just drop that turn, but that was a future turn. See, that, that still does like 27%. It allows me a free switch into Mawal because he's forced to wish here. Or, um, yeah, or Sample or something like that. And this just allows me a free play rough. His Clef is now not really high. Um, And this is this one's the feel, uh, pure Fist Death one. I think the one on Saul was pretty Fist because I took 75% instead of 62, so... Um, right here, I just hard switch back into my Latias, knowing that Zapdos can't really do crap to me. And I go for another HP Fire, and HP Slash does just drop. So, um, yeah, that's that. I go. He goes into Metagross. Uh, I'm not gonna switch out because I know Metagross runs Pursuit. Uh, as I just go for another uh, HP Fire. So HP Fire destroying this guy's whole team. Um, but. What I have to say is, uh, I don't know, it was kind of 50-50 whether I'm switch, going to switch out or not, but I feel like it's pretty obvious that I'm not going to switch out. He kind of complains a bit about losing the tie or whatever, but the thing is, even if he wins the first tie, like, it's not going to matter because it still does 49% because I'm not switching out, right? And there's no other ties that's existent anyways. Um, so I, 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 I don't get it, but it's okay. Uh, I just pretty much go back right into my Azu as he goes for the Specs Ice Beam, does a solid 40%. And right here I go into Magnezone because there's no like there's no reason not to switch to Magnezone here. I feel like um, you saving a sack is saving a sack. Um, as I just go for a Flash Cannon because, well, it's whatever. Uh, I switch out into my Landorus as he goes for the Rocks. I just put mine up. Um, but at this point it's pretty much over if I can play steadily with um, Latios because Psychic just claims one every time something comes in no every time it comes in like if I yeah if I stack this and then I, I decided to go Weave out because well I feel like it's um more uh, reliable but like it's it's just way more reliable than um than that because I, I don't know I, like I, I wasn't I guess I was a bit lazy to calculate if Paladin drops the Psychic and I don't want to go for Draco Meteor Prediction because if he goes Clef, that, that's going to suck. And uh, Weavile just 2 a was everything, so so that's why I decided to just go Weavile. Um, as he goes into the Clef, I just decided to go for a um, Asical Crash. The reason is because, like, well, Asical Crash does a solid like like 40 something to 50%. And if I ever flinch him once, because I thought he would be just wish spamming, right? And if I ever flinch the um, Cliffy Ball once, which the odds will be in my favor if he just spams Wish, then um, then, then Weavile can just B 
beat it, but he decides to just go to just go for a hard moon blast. So that just pretty much means he's sacking the cleft. As I go to Latios, Psychic will pick up a KO here. He goes for Protect, but it doesn't really matter. Psychic picks up the um, Clef. He goes Kyurem. Uh, I know Psychic doesn't kill, so I've decided to go into my uh, zone. As he, got, as he gets the Freeze, which doesn't really matter. But uh, I thought out, fortunately, and Flash Cannon will pick the, that up. He goes into Hippo as I spam the Flash Cannon. Um, and I get a fortunate Spadef drop. And, well, he loses, so... That's pretty much it for this game. He he's complaining about how Hippalan could have won, but I completely disagree. Hippalan would never win because pretty much I just spam flash cannon, and if he ever decides to pick me up, Draco Meteor, and this is gone. So I don't know what he's talking about, but whatever. Uh, I mean the RNG was I feel like not that bad this game. I mean sure he could have won the speed tie and while well, Meteor mash my Latios, but um, I still feel like I had a solid chance of winning this one regardless. And in addition to that, like, I don't know, the, the first the first speed tide really didn't matter at, whatsoever at all. Because, well, it doesn't matter if he's pursuing first or second, he's still doing the same amount of damage. And my Latios is also doing the same amount of damage with um, HP Fire, because I'm not switching out. So, I don't even feel like the RNG was that bad this this match. I mean, he can complain about me thawing after, after two turns of getting frozen. But, well, what is the luck of like what is the chance of getting frozen in the first place? So I don't know. Uh, this one's, this one's just this. I mean, he kind of got destroyed by HP fire, but whatever. Anyways, GG to my opponent. Um, and uh, we'll see you round two. Peace.